spoons and so forth. And it's just wonderful. I even have a pet tortoise, and uh, it loves burnt toast. So I always try to burn a little extra toast in the morning and throw it out to my tortoise. It also likes apple cores. So if I have eaten an apple, I throw, it, throw out the core and hope it'll get, get it before the raccoon does. Mm. So would you talk a little bit, I'm not sure how to ask this exactly, but just um, your experience beginning to identify as a lesbian and did, did you hear what I said? Sorry, your experience beginning to identify as a lesbian whenever that was in your life and and well I uh, I knew when I was in Long Valley Elementary School as a youngster that it was not the boys that I fell in love with it was that eighth grade girl who played the guitar so I knew even then that my affections were in that direction there wasn't anything to do with those kind of affections. But it did it did help me not to make the mistake of getting married. And that was and that was one of them. There were guys realizing I'd probably learn how to make money and would be a good catch, so they came after me, but uh, but but I knew it before I even knew the language to talk about it. And then as I said when the women's movement started, and uh, you learn, I learned the word lesbian. Uh, and I, I think in uh, high school, even I had learned uh, a little bit of the language, but but not much, because it was certainly not something that was talked about. Uh, but it was the women's movement that that gave me the vocabulary to. To realize more about myself. And this trip I've been listening to women talk about their broken relationships and so forth and I thought, boy, I really did make the right choice. <laughs> you know, I, I, just hearing about some guy that was sleeping with every woman that came around but he wanted his wife to stay faithful to him. <laughs> So, so I've I've been pretty clear on that issue for a long time, and stood firm. But as I say, uh, we can talk about it more openly now than we ever could before. Is there any lesbian community where you are? There is no lesbian community where I am. Uh, I can go a distance, like some of the women who. Are you familiar with Olock? Okay, so, uh, some of those women I know personally, and even Alex Dobkin has been down to visit me and that sort of thing, you know. But uh, I have to go quite some distance to ever attend a meeting, and I, I'm not doing distance very well right now. Uh, what happened to me physically was I had to have both hips replaced because I'd worn them out. And then uh, I fell and broke my back mm -hmm. in between the hips. And uh, how I did that is I uh, went into MoDOT. I, was, I had organized a, some people to help clean up the road, litter on the roadsides. And I went into MoDOT, which is Missouri Department of Transportation, to pick up so they give away big yellow bags so you can fill them up and leave them along the roadside. And uh, I didn't realize there was a step up. I, so I went in and hooked my toe on the on the step up and careened against the wall and spattered myself all over the concrete floor. And uh, got up hurting, but then it was after I went to the doctor that I found that I I cracked my back in between the hips. and. And that's what I'm having a hard time getting over. But I'm a lot better than what I was. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hosanna has really poor health. And she and I have been talking about how we intend to get to 
feeling better. And I think, I think we encourage each other in that way. Do you remember Connie Kirtley? I remember her name. Okay, well, I heard from uh, Mariah Redwood recently she said that uh, Mariah lives in Portland. Connie Kirtley and Joanne Hetrick, or whatever her last name is, live in uh, Arizona. And I heard from Mariah that I should get hold of Connie because she was having health problems and really needed to talk. So I did. And uh, she had been diagnosed with liver cancer, inter uh, incurable liver cancer. And when I talked to Ann Milton and told her about it, Ann says, you ask her if it's okay if I pray for her. Ann used to be a Catholic nun. <laughs> Uh, so next time I, I've not been able to get Connie again, but next time I talked to Mariah, Mariah said she had talked to Joanne and uh, that they decided that there was something they could do about the cancer. So I, I emailed Ann Milton back and said, I hope it's okay with you for me to tell you that your prayers really worked. <laughs> I, th I think uh, they're going to be able to do something. Oh, Ann is coming too, did she? Tell you? No, I didn't know. Uh, she had waffled on it because she had a dog that was so old and wouldn't die, and she didn't think the dog could stand the trip. And she has a motorhome. Uh, so one time I would talk to her, and she said she just couldn't make it. And the next time I talked to her, and she said, "Boy, she wishes she could." Well, the last time I got an email from her, she said she was almost ready to cross the Canadian border. <laughs> so she may be here by now, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, that is great.